Uh, we took delivery of our new uh, 770G John Deere today. Traded off a 770D. We use standard controls with the only exception being I use right hand lift. The G model is basically the same cab but they did make some changes. The beams at the corners are smaller so they don't take up as much space. The mirrors are taller. I don't use opening windows. You can get opening windows on the front on each side. I don't use those. I can't imagine why you want to open the window. Same way with an opening window on the sides at the back. And I'll try to get out here and do some walking around. I can't really shoot much video inside the cab. It's so hard to do. Deer cabs, I, I just love them. They got a lot of storage space. Large floorboard area. You don't feel cramped in a deer. Around on this side, got a place to put a cooler. Got my XM radio spotted there. So I'll try to crawl out now. Deer uh, redesigned their their mainframe on the G model and they did that to try to get more blade maneuverability so the mainframe is high. Uh, I, they say they gain blade height. I don't know. I can't verify that. I, I don't like this high main. It kills visibility straightforward. This grader, if you're looking at the ground straight over the main beam, you see the ground 22 feet further out than you did in a D model. Uh, I, I don't really like that, but I, I haven't ran it yet, so I'll hold my, hold my entire judgment on that. They say they got their blade height lifted higher. I can't verify that because I didn't think to measure my blade before I let my D model go. This is a 27 inch mold board instead of a 24. Uh, it's an inch thick instead of 7 eighths. It's a massive blade. Uh, that part kind of excites me. That would be a lot better pushing snow and pushing dirt. Be able to carry a lot more material. Has a lot steeper curve. They also changed the, the front end where the axle fastens on because of changing the main beam. All of this is redesigned. That allowed them to get more clearance under the axle. But more importantly than that, what it allowed them to do that interests me is it allowed them to raise their scour fire up higher. The beam on this scour fire is three inches higher than the beam on my D model. I use my scour fire to, to uh, attach a straight blade, that a dozer blade that I use to push dirt with, and I also use it for my V-plow. Three inches is a lot of difference if you can raise your attachments on the front three inches higher. The, the scour fire itself is the same scour fire as what I had on my D model, so they had to have changed where they attach it to the machine. John Deere cab, uh, when they redesigned the cab and went to the D model, they really improved their cab. Uh, they're uh, very, very comfortable, very quiet, excellent visibility out of it. Uh, good tight cab, uh, maybe have to dust off the dash a couple times a year. Uh, very good environment and that's what I was getting at a while ago about why you would want to open up your windows. There's just no reason to do that. The biggest thing on the G model that, uh, that John Deere brags about and I, I tend to agree with him is serviceability. Look how this machine opens up. Got great serviceability. They were very conscious about where they racked everything. So they got all the filters racked right there together. They don't stack filter, uh, radiators other than the air conditioning radiator is stacked in front of the coolant radiator. And this small radiator is a fuel cooler. It's stacked against the hydraulic cooler. Two bolts lets that one hinge out two bolts less this one pull out. So if you did need to get at them to clean them, you could. They use a reversible fan on this machine and it's computer operated. So uh, the, the having to clean the, the uh, radiator should be a lot less hassle than it was in a D model. So I'm gonna try to close all this up so I'm gonna get a little blurry here.
to excuse the sun, it caught me. There's the side closed. As I mentioned earlier, the fan is a hydraulic operated reversible fan that's ran by the computer. It comes from the factory program to, to reverse every 40 minutes, reverse for 15 seconds. You can adjust that or you can override it completely and do a manual reverse. I don't, I'm just going to leave it alone. I think it's, I think they know more about what it needs than I do, so I'm not going to change that. But it is changeable if you want to. And as I said, the radiators aren't stacked. That's the engine coolant. That's the air coolant going into the supercharger or into the turbo. This is the, the uh, hydraulic. This is the transmission differential. This too just hinges out by removing these two bolts. Try to get it to go back in. They widened the back of this frame, put a bigger radiators in it. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm, I don't, don't quote me, but I'm gonna say six inches wider at the back than it was. It doesn't taper in anymore. It goes straight to the back. This machine uses a nine liter, six cylinder, 245 horsepower. Uh, very, very, uh, very anxious to run that. I think that's gonna be a great improvement. Again, you can see this side opens up completely. Another thing they did was a big positive was they moved the fuel fill down here. Used to fill up there. I've even heard people talk on heavy equipment forums about standing on the tire, putting diesel fuel in with it running and exhaust blowing in your face. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Another thing that deer caught here, which was took them forever to do this. This uh, yellow cap right here, that's where you put the oil in, engine oil in. They extended that out far enough, you can actually put oil in it without using a funnel. It only took them 30 years to figure that out. Again, very, very uh, user friendly. Service chart on the side. Again, I'll fold all this up. Oh, I wanted to point out one other thing I thought was a very neat thing. It's got a work light. If you're trying to service it at night. Batteries are on a slide out rack. Again, closes up to be a very smooth looking machine. Fuel tank being in the back and underneath that's all covered. No access to the fuel tank at all, so you don't have to worry about poking a hole in the tank. The D model, I had trouble with ice building up on the back of the machine. I don't think this machine's going to do that. I think that being all covered up is going to help that considerably. Another thing they did to the blade is they made the slides on the blade easily adjustable. Got cap screws right there that you Loosen the nut and screw the bolt down. Take the slack out of the slide on the blade. John Deere's always struggled with that. So that was a good improvement. And as I said before, these are a very nice looking machine. I understand that pretty doesn't always mean that they work good. But it's kind of like being around a pretty woman or a pretty man. It sure doesn't hurt. Good looking machine. I'll take it out tomorrow and I'll shine all that dirt off the mobile or all that uh, paint off the mobile. Then I'll uh, do some follow up.